been recap time. So we're going to do this good, bad, and then I'll wrap it up. Okay, here's the good. The defense played really well. They really did. Um, Christian Wilkins did a great job. We got some pressure. Jalen Phillips showed up. Um, some things that we haven't done on defense. Uh, we really contained the wide receivers for a while. Uh, it kind of frustrated us a little bit when Needham got hurt and Nick Monogamy had to come in. He was a little nervous. But Noah showed up. I think this is the best game we've probably seen from Noah Ibnogany. And for all of us who have given him hell for drafting him, I mean, finally he showed something. Um, I think the defense did a really good job. Xavier Howard got beat a couple times, which, I mean, when you're pressing like that, Justin Jefferson, I mean, I'll, I'll give it for what it is, um, really contained Dalvin Cook pretty much the whole game and the rushing game uh, until the one big run. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tack that up for... Um, that, that that was more it just deflated, right? I mean, I think you, you thought you fought this hard and, and thought that game was done there. Maybe. Either way, I mean, bad job. Defense did a much better job of wrapping up and tackling than they did last week. Um, so I saw improvements. So there's a good. On the offensive side of the ball, Mike Gesicki got involved. I think as Dolphin fans, we can be really, really hard on Gesicki. But here's the point. He's our third leading receiver, and the guy's an athletic tight end with great hands. Um, you know, Skyler Thompson, when he was in, before he got his thumb hurt, um, was moving the offense really well. And um, so that, that was a plus. You know, Teddy Bridgewater uh, did what he could, right? I mean, he did really well in the fourth quarter. I'll give him that. Here's the deal. This offense just is not designed right now, or at least the offensive line play is not at a level that lets Teddy Bridgewater do what he needs to do. Teddy's a great quarterback. Not as mobile, not as young, not as fast as he used to be. Um, I will flash back to one bad. I think Teddy's pocket presence is awful. He rolled into a couple of sacks that shouldn't have been, and um, that was bad. But um, so, you know, th there's the good, right? So let's go to the bad. The bad is we keep killing ourselves with penalties. Just keep killing ourselves with penalties. We put ourselves out of uh, – field goal range twice in the first half when Skyler was moving the team with, with stupid penalties, not even, you know, understandable penalties. They were bad. Um, the other bad, the offensive line, the offensive line was just getting trucked. They were just getting trucked. Um, they looked tired at the end of the first half, just, just unbelievably got blown up. Uh, had a couple of little bright spots there, but I mean, definitely this line's different with Teron Armstead in it than it is with him out of it. That's not a shocker. Um, the bad special teams. Right, I mean, almost fumbled away a punt, gave up a huge punt return um, on one to give the, the Vikings great field position. And then Jason Sanders missing from 50 again. There's like, there's something at that 50 yard mark that just Jason Sanders cannot seem to overcome right now. Um, nothing from 50 yards. I mean, from 45 in, he's pretty solid and consistent. You get him past 45, it's bad. Um, the other bad, Jalen Waddle. I don't know what's up with Waddle. I mean, if you look at his stat line, it looks great, right? He goes over 100 yards. He tried to make up for it with a big play at the end. Truth is, Teddy's first interception was all on Waddle. Waddle should have caught it, bounced it off of him. And then as we're driving in the fourth quarter to, uh, you know, potentially take the lead, the fumble kills us. So that's tough. Uh, the bad, the running game did not get Mostert going again, and it fell apart. We moved away from it. So here's the all in all. Three and three. It's a good Minnesota Vikings team. I mean, look, they just moved five and one, whatever you want to say. And and we really did contain their offense pretty well. Um, we see that our offense is built for a different brand of quarterback. Hopefully, two is coming back next week. Look, we're six weeks into the season. We're sitting at three and three. Schedule's not super tough. Um, so, you know, there's still a chance for, for us to make a bounce back in this. There were a lot of positives to take away from it. Again, the score is going to look different than what the game was. I think we were definitely in this game and fighting the whole time. Love to see the fire of what that was. Um, Tyreek Hill is still just a game changer, man. That guy does everything, and we need to do everything we can to build those pieces around him and give him a chance to be that guy. And, um, again, good to see Gusecki get involved. And that's where we're at, Dolphin fans. You know, 3-3, three and three, take it for what it is. You, you really can't get too up or too down. You know, this is, again, you know, they said, what, third game in a row that the starting quarterback for the Dolphins have been knocked out. Next man up, right? Next man up in the NFL, absolutely. But that's tough to overcome. So 
let's just, you know, take this for what it is, three and three. Let's reset, take a deep breath. Hopefully Tua returns next week, and, and we get to see what the Dolphins were prior to this. Um, the adversity early in the season is not bad. You can't hate it. Um, it's going to build character. That's what this does. And it's all about getting right at the right time. Not out of the division, not out of the playoffs. It's all still wide open. So we're not jumping off cliffs. We're not super happy. But let's see what next week brings us. Pins up.